So in this video I'm going to uh, take a look at the uh, double crosshair antenna. Now uh, basically the construction of this is uh, virtually the same kind of methods that I used in the uh, single crosshair antenna. So I'm not going to go into too much detail of uh, making the elements themselves. Um, if you haven't seen that video and you want to have a go at making this, uh, I'll link it in the description and uh, you know you want to take a look at that first. But uh, I've also put my own little twist on this antenna because instead of just having the uh, cardboard housings to actually protect the uh, elements like I did in the previous video, I've actually used some large soup cans here to add waveguides to each of the elements. So we get a little bit more range out of this antenna, although we do lose a little bit of the beam width of this antenna. So to start off with then, I've got a sheet of uh, single layer PCB. It's the same size as I used in the uh, single crosshair antenna build. It's uh, 120 millimeters long and it's 100 millimeters wide. You can go a little bit bigger than this if you want to. And what I've done, I've divided it into two halves here and just crossed the corners there so I can find the center and I'm going to drill a uh, five millimeter hole in uh, each one of these centers so I can actually feed and solder the ballon to the PCB itself. So as you can see I've drilled the uh, two holes in the PCB there and I've also gone round and uh, tinned up with a little bit of solder it just makes it easier to solder these ballons in place. Now the measurement for these ballons are exactly the same as in the previous build they are 30.5 millimeters long and I've made mine out of uh, this copper tube in here but you could also use some uh, thinner type of tubing the kind that you get from those uh, telescopic cheap aerials that you can get for your TV. Now because this particular design is a little bit different to the original because we're going to have the two waveguide cans on here I'm going to build it slightly differently. This uh, reflective part here with the PCB on the copper layer this is going to go to the back of the antenna because I'm going to epoxy the uh, waveguide cans on this side because I want them isolated from uh, the back reflector here because that way there's uh, quite a lot of metal in this antenna then and because the balance are actually uh, connected to this reflector so they're active I don't want them to also be connected to the uh, waveguide as well reason being is that uh, it affects the VSWR of the antenna slightly so its performance is uh, a little bit under what it should be so what I'm actually going to do is the measurements for this particular antenna I need to take into consideration this uh, two millimeter uh, depth of the uh, fiberglass on here now what that actually means is that these spaces need to be uh, two millimeters shorter or not quite as high as the previous ones because we need to take into consideration the uh, two millimeter of the fiberglass as well so we get the same amount of depth away from the uh, reflector but we're just doing it backwards so these spaces need to be 24 0.4 millimeters in depth because the uh, actual crosshair antenna needs to be that distance away from the reflector but because we're doing it backwards I've made these two millimeters shorter than they should be so we still get that 24.4 millimeters um, depth space away from the back reflector here we're just doing it backwards so this is the coax that I've uh, prepared then ready to actually solder up the ballon and uh, the ballon actually starts here where this uh, PVC sleeve starts and it actually ends here and the ballon is exactly 30.5 millimeters long so what you need to do is expose the uh, outer braid here and uh, leave it thick enough so you can get in there with your soldering iron and put a little spot of solder on there and then uh, strip away uh, 30 0.5 millimeters away from that that's where we're actually going to solder on our elements so this uh, little piece of that I've exposed here I've already tinned up and I've already tinned up the edge of the tubing here and what I'm going to do is put the coax through the tubing and just solder tack that onto the side of the tube in there and then that's our ballon created it really is that simple you don't have to flow solder all around the tube here just tack it onto the side there so I've got the coax and I've just tacked it on the side of the uh, copper tube in there, the ballon. And uh, what I'm going to do now is just put some heat shrink tubing over the top of it just to protect it. And this is the coax coming out from the uh, opposite side of the tube there. And I've left about one millimetre of the uh, outer 
insulator in place just to make sure the braid doesn't touch it, touch it at the top there and I'm going to put some heat shrink tubing around there as well just a small piece just so uh, there's no danger of actually making contact with the top part of the tube there. So I've epoxied the tube supports in place that are going to hold the uh, legs of the element, uh, support the legs of the element and also keep them at the correct distance away from the uh, reflector itself. And I've prepared the uh, coax just as I did in the uh, previous video, ready to actually solder the legs of the elements in place. So the support and spacing ring has been epoxied down to the uh, PCB here and I've also gone ahead and cut the uh, legs on the elements to the correct length and I've also secured those down onto the ring here. Now in the previous video I actually went into great detail on how uh, this is circular polarised and how it works and the measurements so I'm not going to uh, do that again in uh, this video but uh, I'll put a link in the description in case you haven't seen it you really want to watch that one first before this one because basically you're just making two instead of the one in the middle but um, a couple of questions that came up in the previous one is to do with the spacings and uh, they're all spaced out at uh, 90 degree angles from each other on a 360 degree circle and it doesn't matter where on that circle your uh, leading leg starts that uh, denotes whether it's going to be left hand or right hand circular polarised because it, it is a circle so because it's not uh, linear horizontal or vertical it doesn't matter but they just need to be spaced out at 90 degree angles from each other. So now we're going to make the uh, waveguides for this antenna. Now what I've got here is a soup can and uh, the diameter of this is slightly uh, larger than the normal typical soup can. can. It's uh, actually 85 millimeters in diameter. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this uh, can short because I don't want to use all this length for the waveguide. Now if uh, you have quite a long waveguide, what that does is actually narrow the beam width of your antenna so if you're uh, using this as a uh, receiving antenna then you must make sure that if you have something so long it's pointed precisely at your uh, transmitting antenna because it really is going to narrow that beam width so what I'm going to do I'm going to cut this off at uh, 50 millimeters long and uh, that gives you a good uh, middle ground between beam width and uh, range as well and also this is something you can actually uh, experiment with um, this tin here this is a uh, tuna fish tin and uh, the uh, length of this is uh, not as long it's only 35 millimeters so you could actually use one of these just cut the base off and use it as is without actually cutting away any waste but uh, I think uh, 50 millimeters is probably a good middle ground for a waveguide for this antenna now to cut this tin I'm going to use uh, the cutting wheel on the Dremel. I have tried to cut one of these tins using a hacksaw blade but it's uh, much easier using a Dremel. So I've got everything epoxied in place now. The uh, waveguide cowlings are epoxied down and uh, the elements themselves are all epoxied and secure. So before I actually move on to the wiring at the back what I'm going to do is give it a coat of paint. Now while the paint's drying on the waveguide version of this antenna, what uh, I want to show you here is I'm making a, a uh, standard one so we can actually test it against the waveguide version at the end of the video. But uh, instead of using the plastic ring as the support for the elements and the spacer, I've used these uh, plastic uh, spacers here and I've actually screwed in these uh, screws and what that allows me to do is uh, either tighten them or screw them upwards and I can alter the height of the elements to get them all nice and level and uh, once they're all nice and level I can pop a little bit of super glue in there and then lock them in place. Now one of the things that I'm really interested in trying out with uh, this antenna especially with the waveguide version is actually angling the elements down or upwards and see what kind of effect that has on the wave propagation so very similar to uh, this antenna that I showed you in the first video that's a uh, inverted V dipole antenna directional and it has circular polarization because it has a uh, similar feed method to actually generate that circular polarity.
So I think that will be an interesting experiment to do in the future just to see how we're actually angling the elements up or down. We'll uh, change that waveguide propagation there and uh, may actually improve it slightly depending on what you actually want to use it for of course. So the next step with this antenna is to connect these two antennas up so they work as one and uh, in the last video uh, I released last week I showed you how to make a Wilkinson splitter and uh, that was because I was going to need one for this antenna so it's a separate video and I'll link it in in the description how you can make a simple Wilkinson splitter. Now I've also not put any kind of enclosure on the uh, top here so I've left it open but you could actually cover it with uh, some thin cork like I did in the uh, previous um, crosshair antenna video but uh, I've decided to leave it open for this one. So I'm going to connect the two coaxes up using a uh, Wilkinson splitter then but uh, what I'm actually going to do is uh, not put SMA connectors on these. I'm uh, going to use a Wilkinson splitter and uh, directly solder the coax onto the board so uh, we don't need to use SMA connectors. If uh, you don't intend to actually remove the Wilkinson splitter from your antenna then uh, it's uh, a lot better to actually do it that way and then you're not uh, spending money on SMA connectors. But uh, again if you want to add SMA connectors on it does mean you can take it off and use it on a uh, separate project. And uh, also you do get a little bit of loss with the SMA connectors. You get a much better connection if you do solder directly to the PCB board. So here we are then I've got uh, the traditional uh, crosshair antenna on the left and I've got the uh, waveguide version on the right there and uh, something you have to remember about a directional antenna some antennas are more directional than others and it's all to do with the uh, beam width of the antenna and the more traditional uh, setup of this antenna has a uh, much wider beam width than the waveguide one because the waveguide actually narrows that quite a bit but um, what the uh, waveguide one has over the more traditional one is range so it loses some of that beam width but does gain a little bit more range over the more traditional one now at first glance here with the scan the uh, more traditional one has picked up slightly more access points than the uh, waveguide one because uh, it has a much wider beam width so it's actually seeing access points that the waveguide one can't but the waveguide version of this antenna does have a little bit more range than the traditional one so it's picking up access points that the traditional one uh, will struggle to actually see over in a distance so as I say both are actually performing really well I do actually like this antenna but uh, I have got an access point that is about half a mile away from me it's a uh, office building in a small industrial uh, park that's quite close to me I uh, do not have line of sight it does have to cut through quite a few rooftops and trees to actually get there but it's a good example how these two antennas will actually perform over a distance so this is a signal from a print server that uh, they've actually got in their office now the more traditional one on the left has picked up the signal briefly but it's actually now dropped out and the uh, waveguide one on the right is picking up the signal and again it's uh, probably at the maximum of its range it is actually dropping out from time to time but you can see there when it does connect it's uh, not a bad signal at all it's uh, up into the uh, mid 70s and uh, it's performing a lot better than the more traditional one and that's the difference with something uh, over a great distance that has a uh, narrower beam width it uh, can actually cut through buildings and uh, get a much better signal over range than something that uh, is also directional but has a much wider beam width. So I hope you found this video useful and uh, people ask me all the time which is the best antenna and to be quite honest with you there's no one antenna that uh, actually does everything that you can say is the best antenna they all do certain things differently slightly different and it's just the best fit to how you're actually going to use the, the, the antenna for and what you're going to use it for and uh, especially if it's for a uh, quadcopter setup 
different antennas do better uh, you know over different terrains if you've got a lot of buildings a lot of trees things like that then uh, there's certain antennas that are going to perform a little bit better in that kind of situation and if it's just flat and you've got good line of sight then uh, you know other antennas will perform better you know in that situation so there is no real one best uh, antenna to actually choose from so hopefully you uh, enjoyed this video then if you did please give it a uh, thumbs up any comments or questions drop them below and hopefully you'll join me on the next one